Free RC, we're back with my first ever 90 millimeter jet, the FMS Avanti. Now this is a special edition, 18th anniversary from FMS. This is super sick. I'm so excited to unbox this and check out my first 90 millimeter jet. I do want to give a huge shout out and congratulations to FMS on their 18th anniversary. If you didn't know, FMS was one of the first channels to work with me uh, ever, and I really appreciate it. And I can remember in the first email ever to them when uh, I was working on getting a plane from them to review, I asked, hey, is it okay? Like, I wanna be completely honest with the people that I'm talking to. Uh, I, can I critique it fully? And they were like, yeah, absolutely. Let us know if there's any issues, we'll get them fixed. We wanna hear your feedback. And when they've sent me jets to review, they ask for feedback too. And I've given feedback and they've given it to their engineers. That is so amazing. I absolutely love working with FMS. They let me give my true honest thoughts. And guys, I can't make content if I don't have planes. So a huge shout out to FMS. If you guys are interested at all in checking out the, the 18th anniversary Avanti 90 mil, Guess what? There's a link down below. You can use that. It's an affiliate link. It gives a small kickback towards the channel so I can keep making videos and no extra cost to you. Also, I'll provide a coupon code down below. Uh, this is a new jet, so it might not work, but try it out. Sometimes they do. Without further ado, subscribe. If you like the video at the end of it, make sure to like it. And then if you got something to say, I'd love to hear it. I love chatting in the comments. Let's tear into this and see what's in the box. You can use this section of the video to make sure you got all the parts that you needed and none were accidentally missing. It happens from time to time with anything that you order, so just double check. Right away we have these beautiful wings with actual hinges on them, not just foam hinges. Love to see that. And then our box is split in two, so take that top off and reveal the rest of the goods inside. The big old vertical stab has the 18th logo on it, which looks super sick. I like that. Make sure to spar with your spar. There's actually two of them in here, so make sure you use both, set them aside. Got a little baggie with a Y harness and screws. We got our elevator horizontal stabilitator, the nose cone, the coffee mug. When you're done chug jugging, pull out your fuse and make sure to not drop it instantly. Then you'll notice that beautiful 90 millimeter fan on the back. This would be a great time to put on an afterburner, so keep that in mind. So we got it all in box. I'm stoked. There's not a lot of pieces, which is good for a small brain dude like me. Know what I'm saying? This looks like it's going to be super easy to put together. And I don't know how well the camera is picking it up, but this is a beautiful color. The gold is like a gold flake and the red is a deep red. Like I'm not normally a red guy, but I like this red. I like a nice deep rooted red. By the way, guys, in all of my videos, I put timestamps, so if you need to hop to a specific part, go do that, don't feel bad, but if you do just sit and watch through the whole thing and chill with me while we build this, you're a real one. Let's uh, break out the manual and start piecing her together. All right, we're gonna take our coffee mug and get that inserted in the back of this. It should line up. Just gotta shimmy around here a little bit. Okay, and then what you're gonna notice is there are three long screws and one short screw. All the screws are in the same bag, so you gotta dig around a little bit, but they are noticeable enough that you'll see them. The short screw goes right in on top, and then the three screws go two on the side, one on the bottom. Now I did have a little bit of trouble getting these to line up, so don't be afraid to just shimmy it around until they sit right, but then they will end up going in. And also I did notice there is plastic around most of the screw holes, which is super nice, but just a reminder, don't over tighten these. You are drilling into plastic or foam. So just, you know, hand tight is good. Next up, put your wing spars in, but don't poke yourself going through. Big fan of these quick wing uh, connects because loading this in the car is gonna be tough. So being able to just pop the wings off Sure, it might take a screw or two, but that's okay. My uh, FMS F86, I have to unscrew that puppy all the time and I load it in my Supra. So I am so happy to see the quick wing connects. I need a little bit of foam in it. Make sure you clean that out. You want a good connection there. Oh, there's actually quite a bit. Make sure to check this connection for any foam that's in there.
plugs in just like an old computer. Might need to get a bigger stand if I'm getting bigger planes. This one had a lot of um, styrofoam in it too. <laughs> yeah, blowing it like an N64 cartridge. The wings are a little tough to get the spar in, so do your best, but I promise they will eventually go in. Whew, didn't know I had to do a little bit of wrestling. <laughs> the rest of the screws from here on out are all the same size, and it's only two screws per wing, which is really nice, especially if you're utilizing it for that quick disconnect feature. That's a big girl. All right, next up. We're gonna need to grab this little uh, Y harness out of here. Okay, so what you're actually gonna wanna do here is take this and put it through this small channel underneath, feed that through so now you have a spot for these wires to go, and then you're gonna plug your elevator in. There we go, we'll make those leads nice and short. Now we can plug in our elevator. Two in the front, one in the back. Wait, do not make the same mistake I did. These two screws in the front are for your rudder. Slightly farther back is where the two for the elevator go. I found this out after putting the rudder back on. Had to go all the way back, so make sure you're putting your screws in the back. I screwed my elevator screws into the two front ones. It's the two rear ones. Just wanted to show you guys a close up so that way you know what I'm talking about exactly. Don't make this mistake, it's unneeded. Now we can get back to putting our rudder on. Make sure you tuck in your wires so nothing's gonna get pinched. And this is gonna be three screws also. Vertical stab, super easy to put on. Get those three screws cranked in there and then you get to do the best part of all, putting the nose cone on. Bada bing, bada boom, just a few screws and she is together. Guys, I really hope the video is doing this justice because this mustache is gorgeous. If you haven't seen the mustache on this guy, it rivals any other mustache that I've seen. But secondary to that, this plane is gorgeous. I love how this thing looks and it is a rocket ship. This is a monster absolutely beautiful plane so what we have left now is to get these on but overall install so far hasn't been bad at all a few screws i love when there's no glue one thing before we install our control rods is we want to put in our receiver hook up the battery to make sure all of our servos are zeroed out uh today we're putting in the eight channel SPM AR8020T spectrum receiver. It does not have a safe or gyro because we will also be installing Reflex V3. Because Reflex V3 has a pre-programmed mode on it that I can connect to an app on my phone, select the brand new Avanti, and boom! It is perfectly set up for it. I've had a lot of great success with Reflex in the FMS planes. I absolutely love it. So we're gonna put our receiver in, the Reflex in, and then we will install our control rods. So when connecting the Reflex V3 to your receiver, if you're going this route, um, I've made the mistake before. So even though I'm a little bit silly goofy sometimes, I figured there might be one other person in the entire world that might have this issue too. So I'll just explain it. When you plug in all of your lead wires into the Reflex V3, they go in a specific order from channel one to channel five, five channels. These channels do not directly correlate to the Spectrum receiver. For other receivers, I don't know what order they go in, but for Spectrums, it's different. So number one is Aileron here, but on Spectrum, number one is my throttle. So put your leads with all the tags at the end and then plug them into the corresponding one on your actual receiver. Don't just go in order. You get what I'm saying? it'll be right as rain it seems kind of difficult it's actually not difficult at all you just got to know what order to plug them in on your receiver and you're good to go so right now it looks a little crazy but we'll get this cleaned up 
All right, we got our Reflex V3 in. The receiver is mounted under there, so we're gonna do our first fire up. So I have a 6S 5000 battery here, 50C. That's probably what we'll be running in this. This can also run 8S. Got lights, that's a great sign, like to see that. Get my transmitter ready for bind. We're gonna tap our button. Okay, we press that. Oh yeah, we got the dance. Ooh! I love how slow they come down. They come down nice and scale. They got these beautiful gear doors on there. That never gets old. I freaking love that so much. Beautiful. I'm gonna give her a little juice. <laughs> Set up our throttle cut right away. Now that our servos are zeroed out, we can put our control horns in. It looks like there's seven included in the bag. They're all the same length. So now it's just getting these control surfaces nice and level and putting these on. Oh, quick side note, manual says just put them all in the top holes. So that makes it simple. So putting these on are pretty standard. It's very similar to any other plane you do. Just get them nice and flush and line them up. You have your rudder, your elevators, your ailerons, and then the problem set in for me after that. The flaps, this is the aileron, those are good, but the flaps are really tricky. It's a tight spot to fit that in to snap. The best way that I found to go about it, honestly, is to take the screw out, snap it on, and then put the screw back in. I tried for way too long to get these flaps on. It was a huge pain and I really marred up the plane. I was pretty ticked at myself, but I wanted to show you guys uh, because if you do struggle with it a little bit, you're not alone. It was tricky to do. As you can see there, I, I scratched some paint off. It's just in a tough spot. The ailerons are nice and easy, so don't worry about those. But then going back to the flap, I noticed on this side too that the I needed to face it the other way than the other one. So all of them are facing inwards except this one because it needed to fit in the channel. The flap ones were just a little odd. Uh, I did get them done, but they took me way longer than what they, they should have. There you have it. The 90 millimeter Avanti is complete. It went together beautifully, super easy, minimal parts, no glue. Only part that was tricky was putting on the flaps because of my big old sausage fingers and trying to get the control rod on the ball and just take out the screw, put it back in. The best way to do it, I, I got some marks on it, but it is what it is. I'm showing you guys what it's like to do it and that's the part I had trouble with. I'm sure there's someone out there that can do it better. Overall, I think this thing's going to look amazing in the sky. It's going to contrast it super well with the red, gold, and black, not to mention these beautiful bright lights. I love this jet. It is giant, but it has the quick disconnect wings so you can pop it in the car. So make sure to, if this video helped you at all or you liked it to like the video, subscribe if you haven't, drop a comment, and stay tuned for the maiden flight. Go watch it if it's out. I appreciate you guys so much for watching, and uh, I got to go fly this. I'm, I'm too excited. Dump the flaps. <laughs>